This is King's Cross in Sydney, the city's most bustling hotspot, famous for its packed bars, loaded strip clubs, and dawn till dusk nightlife. But more recently, it's becoming known for more than just a good time. Alcohol-related violence is on the rise, and the government began facing pressures to do something about it. Enter the lockout laws. There's often kind of a culture in certain parts of the nightlife community and certain parts of the Australian kind of youth community of a you know certain bravado and things like that that you know I think at times can be exacerbated and lead to violence. government reacted to the slimming problem by introducing the lockout laws, a set of laws and procedures aimed at quashing the violence that plagues Sydney nightlife. Covering the CBD and King's Cross, the laws enforce 1.30am lockouts and 3am last drinks at hotels, registered clubs, nightclubs and licensed karaoke bars, and 10pm last sales at liquor stores. However, the fallout of the lockout laws do not only impact partygoers around King's Cross, Music and art venues around Oxford Street and the CBD are also impacted by the same laws and face different consequences. I'm Adam and I'm the, I look after bookings and promotions at Good God, which means it's my job to oversee all of the entertainment that comes into the club um, and you know make sure basically people are coming in, they're enjoying themselves and there's people in the room having a good time. Well, I guess unsurprisingly for somebody that does this for a living, I, um, I'm not a fan at all of the lockout laws. Good God has always been a place that we, you know, that I've gone and, and that people go um, to have a good time to party late into the night, um, particularly on weekends, and to do it in a really kind of inclusive and warm and, and welcoming environment. So laws that, um, you know, try to deal with the problem in a way that paints everybody with the same brush and that um, really has an uh, inevitably big effect on all of Sydney's nightlife is, is something that we are really disappointed by. We need to you know, have a rational and a kind of fact-based conversation about this rather than what to a lot of us felt like quite general and quite sweeping reforms that didn't really kind of answer the question. I mean, I think the long-term effects of the lockout laws on Sydney's nightlife culture are gonna be really drastic and really bad for us, not just on you know a local scale and you know folks like myself could lose our jobs. That's terrible, but thinking kind of bigger picture, I mean, it's gonna be bad for Australia's music community, it's gonna be bad for our cultural exports, it's gonna be you know really quite catastrophic to what is a really burgeoning and really exciting electronic music scene. to be watching Coachella over the um, last weekend, one of the biggest music festivals in the world. We were seeing folks like Flume and Anne Leneau and flight facilities, you know, performing live on massive stages to international audiences, millions of people watching around the world. And that all comes from this exact nightlife and music that we're talking about now. We're expecting to see more people go out to, you know, Bondi and Surrey Hills and Newtown and other areas that have late night venues, but um, at the moment aren't covered by these laws. I mean, I don't think the law has been particularly successful. We were seeing even on the first week of lockouts, violent incidents in the city that were quite well reported. It doesn't really address the reasons why people get violent with each other. It's not because it's late at night, there's other factors there. You know, I think the laws that were put in place were, you know, obviously designed to help, but also designed to be very recognisable and very kind of resolute. Um, where, in my opinion, there could have been measures that would have addressed the problem in a more um, kind of sensitive way and probably a more effective way.